reading today is the Gospel according to Mark, first chapter, verses one, uh, 9 through 15. And it's titled, The Baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. The beginning of the Galilean minister starts then with verse 14. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. From Genesis 9. 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you. As many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a, a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. And remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between you and all flesh that is on the earth. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words this morning. Welcome to Lent. Well, actually, when Lent started on Wednesday, giving us 40 days from Wednesday to prepare ourselves for the risen Christ to come into this world. 40 days. 40 days for us to look back upon our lives and to see where we are. 40 days for us to be in prayerful thought and communication with God, asking for forgiveness and understanding our role in God's world today. 40 days of self-denial, 40 days of introspection, 40 days of comp con contemplation, 40 days reflecting upon the life, the death, the cross, and the resurrection of Christ. 40 days. It's not an insignificant number when you go through and talk about the Bible. The rain fell on Noah for 40 days and nights. Moses fasted alone in the presence of the Lord for 40 days and nights as he wrote the Ten Commandments. Elijah fasted for 40 days and nights as he went to Mount Horeb and was encountered by God. Jesus fasted for 40 days and nights when he was in the desert and tempted. All of these Use their 40 days and nights to get closer to God, to listen 
to God to better understand God's call upon their life. Our 40 days and nights have just begun. And so this morning, what better way to start than at the beginning with the book of Genesis? As we all know with the story of Moses, for 40 days and nights the rain fell upon the earth and flooded everything. Except for Noah, his family, and the animals that they were able to gather and place upon the ark. And so now this morning the, water, the, the rain has ceased, the earth has dried up, Noah and his family and all living creatures of every flesh are now out walking the world. And God speaks to Noah. And God says to Noah, let us come together in a covenant for you and all your descendants, which is us, because there's no one else left. We descended from Noah because, well, we had to. There's no other, anybody else out there. And so God goes on to establish this covenant to make sure that no one, and we know that the, co the covenant is, is with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animal, and every animal of the earth with you. This is not just for humanity. This is not just for us who walk on two legs. This is for all of creation, every single bit of it. Sometimes we forget this. God made a covenant with, yet, with us, but also with creation. And because of this, we are bound to God and to everything that God has created and everything that God has called good. Okay, there's my green moment for the sermon. So we'll move on now. But a couple of things that I want you to know, that I want you to understand is the covenant was made with the, the entire creation and also the covenant was multi-generational. It wasn't just for this certain family of humans. It was for them and all humans. It was for those creatures and all creatures. The covenant was for everyone. And another interesting point in all of this is that God is making this covenant with Noah, but Noah never speaks. This is God's covenant. This is a one-sided covenant. God makes it with us, but we made nothing with God. This is God's covenant for us. God agreed to do everything, all that was said in our scripture this morning, for us and expects nothing from us. It was a promise made by God to humanity in which humanity gives nothing back to God. There's a reason for this. It's not the greatest reason in the world, but God at this point does not have a lot of faith in humanity. In Genesis 8, verse 21, we read these words. And when the Lord, yep, and when the Lord smelt the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind. For the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. The human heart is evil from youth. That is our cross to bear as we go through. That is our place to say we can make a change. 40 days and 40 nights, we can make the change. 
And God promises here never again to destroy the world by flood. Remember that. Always remember that. No matter what other people tell you, God says, I will never destroy the world by flood. And then to help us with all of this, a reminder in the sky, a rainbow. But a reminder in the sky that is not for us, but for God. God will never again send out the floods to destroy the world and the rainbow that has been given. The sign of God's repentance shows us that it was true then and it is true now. God took 40 days and nights of rain to come to the conclusion that violence and retribution are not the answer to the problems of this world. God sent us Jesus, who used no violence, no retribution, but was the victim of violence and retribution to show us the way of peace and love for all of the world. That's the journey to the cross, to understand peace and love for the world. This is where our 40 days should go. Our 40 days of self-denial, introspection, contemplation, reflection should be for something. They should be to help us learn who we are, what God is calling us to do. God learned violence, not the answer. And so God changed the ways that God was going to do things from then on. God limited the powers that could be used. And God now becomes not only the creator, but the protector of all creation. God becomes committed to no longer destroying humanity and creation, but is bound to humanity and creation. And we begin to understand why Christ was sent for us. The death of Jesus for all creation upon that cross, for us, for you, for the world, for everything, comes to us in peace. It's to show us how nothing good comes from violence. As God said to Noah, the human heart is evil from youth. But we can be better. We can learn from those in the past to teach us, to understand that, yes, maybe from youth our heart is evil, but we can change. God and Christ are telling us, they're showing us that we need to be better, that we need to put away the evil that is within us and to start acting like Christ, to start loving the world and all of creation. David Lose said in one commentary, if God, who alone has the right to despair, to judge or destroy, surrenders the divine prerogative from covenantal commitment, might not we, who have tasted this mercy, look upon all persons and all things as inherently worth while? That is, as those things which God has called worthy. Is that not the message for us today? If God can overlook our flaws, our shortcomings, our evil, our hatred, can't we do the same? Can't we put away what is in our hearts and look through the eyes of Christ, through the eyes of love, on all creation. That is our message. That is what we are to use this 40-day journey to find out. That is the message we need to hear as we take this journey within ourselves, not alone, but with God, with Christ, 
and with everyone else. This is how we begin Lent this year. Looking to understand that we are not perfect, but we are not completely evil either. There is good within us. We have been shown how to use the good within us. We can start to change our ways. We can start to love. We can join in the covenant with God to not destroy any of creation. To not destroy anything that God has deemed good. The sign is in the sky for God, but it is also a sign for us. A reminder that we too are called to repentance. That we too are called to change the violence and and retribution that is in our past, that is in our humanity, so we don't make it a part of our future. If God can realize that violence doesn't work, why can't we? The rainbow shows us that all can work together. That all can come together and that all can see the goodness and beauty in everything that God has created. Our 40 days has begun. Let us take this journey with each other. The first steps moving forward and begin to understand our call in this world and our place within the covenant of God that was made for all of creation. Amen. Of Christ the Lord, run to him eternal.